And also, there is an extra point if the random samples, here the velocities of these two points, are independent, are statistically independent, the result of this correlation should be zero. So, if you have two points, distinct points in space, and you compute this kind of tensor, velocity, uh, if, uh, and if the result is a zero, it means that they, uh, from physical viewpoints, they are, they don't, you cannot find a re relation between these two points, and they are not correlated to each other. For example, consider the flow or cylinder. This is the von Karman vortex street. We have three points. These two points are near each other here, A and B, and the third one is uh, very far from these pair of uh, points. And so you compute the ensemble average of product of velocity fluctuations in x direction at points A and B. The result of this correlation is not zero. It means that they are related to each other. As I, I told you at the beginning, we want, we want to use these correlations to find scales of eddies. So, if they are, uh, the correlation is not zero, it means that, that they are inside, uh, one, inside one eddy. So they are correlated to each other, or they are statistically dependent. But the point 3C and these two points are statistically independent. Uh, so they are not, uh, from turbulent uh, definition, they are not correlated to, based on turbulent definition, they are not correlated to each other. So if you compute the ensemble average of product fluctuations of velocity in x direction in point c and for example point b the result will be zero so, so we can based on this definition we can define the size of a vortex or size of an eddy uh, the size of an eddy is the length of the r vector is the length of the r vector in which the velocity correlation uh, tensor is zero. This so is the size of the vortex. So, so vortex size is uh, the magnitude of the R vector when Rij or the, this tensor is zero. This means that the, the point is out of the vortex. Uh, they are independent from statistical viewpoint. If the flow is uh, isotropic, so, uh, squared u is defined as the ensemble average of the squared u uh, fluctuations and uh, also equals the ensemble average of squared v fluctuations and also uh, equals the ensemble average of the squared w fluctuations. u, v, w are velocity components in three directions. And you see, we want to, uh, in different sciences, uh, we prefer to work with dimensionless numbers, so let's di non-dimensionalize these uh, correlations. Uh, so that dimensionless form of the velocity correlation is shown by, for example, f and g as a function of r. Uh, the numerator of this fraction is the ensemble average of the x-velocity fluctuation in A, in point A, and uh, also in point B, the product of fluctuations in two points in x direction, and the denominator is square u. You can re <coughs> repeat <coughs> this relation, but this time these are the fluctuations in x direction. This time, uh, at the numerator, you have the product of fluctuations at, uh, in y direction. You may write fluctuation in z direction, or the first one the fluctuation in x direction, the second one the fluctuation in y direction, and so on. Uh, the other property of these non-dimensional uh, relations is that the limit of uh, f r and g f as a function of r and g a function of r, when r goes to zero, or it means that two points are lie on each other. We don't have two points; we have one point. Then r is zero. It means that we have just one point. The limit should be zero. This is the perfect correlation. And also the integral of f r from zero to infinity with respect to r, it means uh, beginning from one point and uh, the distance between uh, these two points gradually increases, increases to infinity. The integral of f 
uh, with respect to r from zero to infinity is uh, called the integrated length scale the integrated length scale of that specific turbulent flow and this thing which is shown by L this is the integrated length scale and it can be used uh, to define this stunning size three times L is uh, the uh, suggested size of the dummy, which can be used to simulate a turbulent flow. Similar to the special correlation, we have the time correlation. The other name is the autocorrelation. Autocorrelation. As you see, in a special correlation, we have two distinct points, and we try to find a relation or a correlation between the velocity fluctuations in two different points in space. But in time correlation, we had the, there, there is a similar trend, but uh, we have two, two times. So uh, we try to find the velocity of uh, uh, a correlation between the velocity of uh, a point, one point, at a specific time and the velocity of the point at another time. So the correlation uh, presents a relation between two points in time coordinate. Here, this is a space coordinate, but this correlation speaks about the time uh, coordinate. Or the auto correlation, the other name. And similar to the previous case, we can non-dimensionalize or the normal or normalize the um, definition by uh, use, this is the autocorrelation coefficient, which is shown by rho uh, as a function of t, of course. Uh, here the numerator is the time uh, autocorrelation, and the denominator is the average of the time average of the squared velocity. Rho is a normalized autocorrelation or autocorrelation coefficient. Rho uh, at time zero is, uh, should be one, similar to this case, perfect correlation. And using the Schwartz inequality, it can be shown that the uh, autocorrelation coefficient at time t is uh, less than one, using the Schwartz inequality. And the last one, similar to the integrated length scale, we can define the integrated time scale, normalize the uh, autocorrelation coefficient, rho t, from zero to infinity with respect to time. This time, with respect to time, t, interval. You see the two concepts are very similar to each other, but this one has something related to the special coordinate or special scale of the problem, and this is related to the time scale of the turbulent flow.